Hey guys, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and today I'm doing a little mastering with the Newfangled Audio Elevate plugin. Uh, this is a really cool uh, mastering suite, mixing and mastering suite, really, of four different plugins. Uh, you have the Elevate plugin, which has a built in filter bank, a limiter and EQ, uh, transient emphasis, and a clipper slash saturator in it. And then along with the Elevate plugin, you can also load up each of these different modules individually if you like. So there's a graphic EQ, there's a transient emphasis plugin with a mix blend control, which is really nice. I find this really helpful for uh, bringing out the punch on drums. You have uh, your sort of spectral clipper slash saturator here. And again, these are just the, the modules within Elevate. So while you can take these out of Elevate and use them for mixing, I'm going to be using them all within the Elevate plugin to master a track. So I'm working on a hard rock uh, heavy metal track. This is actually uh, my band Right Stripped from way back in the day. We got back together and uh, recorded a new album. And uh, this is actually one of our old songs. It's like a 15 year old song that we re-recorded. I'm pretty happy with the mixes, but there's some things I want to do with the master. So let me just bypass the plugin for now. Let's give a bit of the song a listen as is. Okay, so the first thing I usually do when I master is I listen to the entire song or a good portion of the song and sort of diagnose some of the problems that I hear. And I mixed uh, all of this several months ago, so I've had a few months to sit on these mixes and sort of figure out what I want to do with them. One, I want the guitars to sound kind of beefier and bigger. Uh, two, I want the transients to come out more, particularly the snare drum. And obviously you need to, to limit it to bring it up to uh, mastering uh, level standards. Let's, uh, let's give this a shot using Elevate here. Now the first thing you can do is you can use the filter bank to figure out what frequencies are important to you in this master. So the frequencies that you define here in the filter bank are going to translate over to the limiter slash EQ section. So for example, my second band is 102 hertz. If I change 102 hertz over here, it's going to change that filter band over here. So you can really hone in on the frequencies in the master that are important to you. For example, I want to bring out the snare drum. So I need to find some of these little peaks where the snare drum is, set them where, you know, where appropriate, and then boost them with the EQ. So we're getting some low mid range of the uh, the snare in this 231 and 351 range. Let me just sweep that around, and see if I can hone in on the exact uh, the exact peak. Cool, and let me find some of the, the upper sort of transient frequencies of the snare as well. Yeah. So yeah, we're getting some transient in there. They're, they're kind of soft, but let's sort of move this around, see if I can find it better. Yeah. 
Yeah, and we're getting a lot of the click of the kick in there as well. So let me go over to my limiter EQ now, and I can use these bands. So it was 106 to 275 and then 4600. I can boost these bands. I can solo them as well. And you'll find you're not going to just boost one band. You're going to boost like a whole bunch of bands around that area. So that's sort of like the bottom end of the snare. Let's uh, listen in for some of the, the more clicky transients up here. Another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find the frequencies where the lead vocal is. Usually you can improve the diction or the clarity of the vocal by boosting like the 1 to 2k range a bit. So let me search through here and see if I can find some of the ranges here where he's uh, where his lead vocals are. go back and uh, let's bypass this. It's got its own built-in bypass here and it will match the level the best it can. Yeah, I mean, with mastering, I've said this in other videos, you're not making drastic changes. You're making maybe five, 10% improvements overall. It's not about drastically changing the tone of the song. If you have to drastically change the tone of the song, then you probably just need to go back and remix the song. So um, I'm gonna go into my transient module here. And the thing I love about this transient module is that like the limiter and like the filter bank, it also plays on the same frequencies, the same bands as the filter bank. So you can add transient uh, emphasis more for some bands and less for other bands. Like my sub low bass probably doesn't need much transient emphasis, nor does, you know, the air, like the cymbals on the top end. But I might want to go in and again, find, uh, hone in on those frequencies where the snare and the kick drum are and maybe bring them out even more. So what you can do is you can adjust the amount of emphasis for each band down here, but then you can also boost the amount of transient emphasis you want overall here. So I just go through and I find the areas where I hear those clicks, where I hear, the, hear those faint little transients, and I boost them a little bit. Let's see if we can do the same for the bottom end of the snare drum down here.
There's this uh, really big breakdown section at the end here of some really fast double bass. So see how this fares on the drums. You know, I might actually put a little bit of transient emphasis in that 2K range where I boosted his voice because it's helping to bring out the clarity of like the consonants as well, especially when it breaks to just, you know, the big group vocals here. You found my deep disguise. Yeah, on deep disguise on those hard Ds there. You found my deep disguise. And then with it. You found my deep disguise You've heard my inner lies You found my deep disguise you Cool, so I'm getting um, the transients that I want. Let's focus on maybe beefing up the guitar tone a bit. So the way you can do this is with the clipper. Now the clipper is like uh, essentially like a saturator. It's like a, a drive unit. And you just have two controls. There's a, a drive control, and then you have your uh, clipper shape. So this is going to basically determine whether you want like a soft drive or a soft clip or a hard clip. I typically like using the soft clip. I don't use a lot of this. Just a dabble do you. You know, like a little bit goes a long way. So let's just beef up the guitar a bit using this. Let's hear it. Yeah, it's really beefing everything up, even the, the vocals and the drums. Again, you, you got to be careful how much you use this. If you're, you know, mastering like dance music or something, you could probably crank this pretty heavy. The guitar already saturates things a lot, so I don't necessarily need to saturate it too much more. Otherwise, things just sort of get boomy and loud and unclear sounding. Let's listen to this uh, breakdown section one more time with the clipper in. So the last thing you can do is you can add a limiter to all of this. So if you click on the limiter EQ, you can adjust the limiter gain here. And what this will do is it'll automatically sort of brick wall limit your signal. So um, you can also view uh, all of the main parameters together here. You can control the uh, limiter settings, the overall transient settings, the overall spectral clipper settings. So you can also control things like speed and your gain and your ceiling for your limiter here. The interesting thing here is that the limiter is before the transient emphasis and before the clipper. So it's interesting how that works. I would have expected the limiter to be at the end, but I guess the adaptive level is able to pull down the level so that any transient boosts come through after the limiter, but you still end up with a signal that doesn't clip. So I found that really, really interesting. And honestly, when you think about it, it's almost better that way. You know what I mean? Like 
if you limit heavily after a transient boost, you're losing the transients anyway. So here we're putting the transient boost after the limiting and then auto adjusting the level afterwards. So really, I mean, that's it's quite genius when you think about it and also like quite logical. It actually seems like the better way to do it. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to throw just logics uh, loudness meter on here. I mean, this it's heavy metal, so it's like not going to be hard to get up to negative 14 LUFS, but uh, we'll see what we can do here. Negative 14, what am I talking about? Negative 10 for uh, hard rock. It's not a standard, but negative 14 is, you know, what I would probably master at for like a softer song. I'm going to set my ceiling to actually negative 1 dB. If you haven't heard already, a lot of streaming services actually like to have one full dB of uh, peak headroom. The level of your song can get reduced in some streaming services. So lately I've been mastering at negative one. I used to master at like negative 0.1, then negative 0.3, and, and now I'm mastering pretty much everything at negative one dB. Unfortunately, that messes with how much uh, peak headroom we have. So you end up having to hit it a little harder with the limiter to get the same amount of loudness, but it is what it is. Um, you know, I'm not a loudness uh, freak. You know, I'm, I'm fine with mastering things I'm more quiet if it's called for, but with heavy metal, I think even with the limiter off, this is probably gonna be, you know, at least negative 12. So I'm gonna shoot for negative 10 here. I've lost my faith. Cool, so we're easily at negative 10. Let me try uh, boosting some of the high end a bit more. I realized the frequencies I boosted up here are pretty high. I mean, they're like on the top end of the air, like you're hardly even gonna hear those. So let me try boosting down here a bit more. And then I also wanna cut this mid range. It's a little, I don't know, shreddy sounding. Yeah, let's cut there, so. You can boost all day, but don't forget to cut as well. Let me check out some of these mid-range frequencies in here as well. Yeah, it's tricky because it's the same range as the body of the snare, but you get some like mid-range buildup in the guitars that can sound kind of muddy. So I'll pull these down a little bit, but this one in particular I'm going to keep up. Let's give that a shot. Yeah, much better. It's really opening it up uh, a bit more now. Let's listen to this breakdown section one more time and I'll AB it a couple times.
Yeah, so it's got more punch, a more open high end, a bit more body and umph in the guitars and the mid-range. Again, it's a 5 or 10% difference here. It's not a drastic change. I don't want to completely undo the mix. I just want to put a nice final varnish, if you will, on the master. Hard rock and metal are particularly difficult to master because of how harmonically rich and dense the mixes tend to be. So Elevate does a really good job of breaking down the master into these minute multi-band elements so you can pinpoint elements that you want to bring out or pinpoint other areas that you might want to subdue. If you want to check out Elevate, I'll leave links in the video description below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.